Hello, my name is Bradley Eichelberger, and I am the PIPPAP GIS Specialist Consultant for SPREP, and this is the first video that serves as supplementary material to complement the training on the Pacific Islands Protected Area Portal and Geographic Information Systems for Improved Protected Area Planning and Management Workshop that was conducted in the year 2020. In this video, we will mainly focus on QGIS basics. Specifically, we'll become more familiarized with the QGIS interface, learn how to import various data types, and also learn how to stylize or symbolize these data sets to make them visually more appealing. So when you first open up QGIS, you're going to see something very similar to what's displayed on the screen here. At the very top of the screen, we have the menu items. And there's several tabs that we could explore here. The first is the project tab. And this lets us either start a new project, open previously saved projects, or save the project that we're currently working on. We can also set up a new print layout, and this is what we'll explore in a later lesson, but this essentially lets us build different maps. And we can also manage these in what's called the Layout Manager. Also in the Edit tab, we have various options for copying features from one shapefile and pasting them into another. We can add very specific vector styles, such as circles and rectangles. In the View tab, we have a couple different tools that let us pan and zoom in and out through the map canvas. We have options to measure lines and areas that are displayed on the map canvas and various zoom options. In the layer tab, there are a couple options here that let us either create a new layer so we can create new shape files or we can add various different types of data, including vector data, raster data, and tabular data. There's also a settings tab, which lets us customize the QGIS interface. There's a plugins tab, which lets us install and load third-party tools for analysis. The vector tab, gives us access to very specific tools used to process and analyze vector data. The raster tab lets us perform different operations and analyses for raster data. And there's several other tabs that I'm not going to go into much detail about, but you can explore on your own. Immediately underneath the menu options are a series of toolbars. A lot of the tools that are displayed in the toolbars are also available in the menu options, such as opening a new project, opening previously saved projects, saving your current project, panning and zooming in and out of the map canvas, and things that we had just mentioned in the menu option tabs. The third component that you're going to see is the map canvas. This is where the data will be visually displayed when you load it into your project. The browser panel helps us navigate to different data sets that are stored on your computer or other attached storage devices. The layers panel, or also known as the table of contents, lists the data layers that are added into your project and subsequently visualized within the map canvas. And the last important component is the status bar. The status bar displays the coordinates of the cursor as we move through the map canvas. It also displays the map scale, and most importantly, the coordinate system that the map canvas is displayed in. In this case, it's being displayed in EPSG 3832, which is WGS 84 PDC Mercator.
the first data set that you add into your project actually sets the coordinate system for the map canvas and the project. And we'll see this shortly when we start adding data into our project. Next, I'm gonna show you four ways of how you can add data into your QGIS project. The first option is to simply go to the browser panel. And here, I can navigate to my C drive, to QGIS Training Vanuatu folder, the datasets subdirectory, and I can see there's several shape files that are in this folder. The first data set I'm going to add is the Vanuatu WDPA points. These are actually protected area points for the country of Vanuatu that are derived from the World Database of Protected Areas. If I double click on the data set, two things happen. It's displayed visually in the map canvas as well as added to our table of contents. And now the coordinate system of the project is set to WGS84, which was the coordinate system of the Vanuatu WDPA point data layer. The second way I can add data is to go up to the layers tab in the menu options. And if I go down and select add layer, you can see there are several different ways or different tools to add in different styles of data, such as the add vector data, add raster data, add delimited text data layer. For this case, I'm actually gonna add another vector layer. And when I click on this, it opens up a dialog box where I'm allowed to browse and find the data set that I'm interested in using. And in this case, I'm gonna go and select the Vanuatu WDPA polygons layer. I can also either click on the shape file here or I can set a filter and make it specifically look for Esri shape files and only return those in the browser box. So when I click on this, I just see the shape files that are located within this directory. And I'm gonna go and navigate to WDPA polygons and then select open and add the data set and then close. And now I can see there's a Vanuatu WDPA polygon data that's displayed in the map canvas as green polygons. The third way I can add data is to use this toolbar that's located on the left-hand side of the browser panel. You'll see there's an add vector layer, an add raster layer, add delimited text layer. These are all similar to what was displayed in the layer tab of the menu options. For this example, I'm going to add a raster data set. Once again, once I click on this, a dialog box opens up. It lets me browse to where my imagery will be located. So this will actually be in an imagery subdirectory. I'm going to select the TIFF file for the imagery for Vanuatu and click open, add, and then close. And we can see that the imagery is now loaded for one of the islands for Vanuatu. The fourth way I can add data is to simply drag and drop it into the QGIS project from a Windows file folder. For this example, I'm going to locate where the shapefile extension is for Vanuatu Roads from OpenStreetMap 2020 and simply drag and drop it into the QGIS map canvas and it becomes added into our project. So now we have four data sets that were loaded into our QGIS project by four different methodologies. So I'm gonna zoom into Afete Island. So I'm gonna go up and select the zoom into tool and then draw a rectangle around where I wanna zoom into. You may notice that the satellite imagery is actually being loaded on top of our Vanuatu WDPA polygons and our Vanuatu WDPA points. 
we can change the way that the data sets are drawn in the map canvas by going over to the table of contents and dragging the order of the layers. In this case, I drag the satellite imagery to the bottom and it's displayed underneath all the vector data. Also in the table of contents, we're able to explore some of the properties of the vector data sets. So if we go to one of the vector layers and right click, several options become available. We can zoom to the layer, we can duplicate the layer, uh, but most importantly, we can actually view the attribute table. So we can actually see the descriptive data for the polygon layer. So by clicking open attribute, we see several things. First off, at the top, we see that there's 13 features in this polygon layer. This means that there's 13 polygons. We can also see the names of the fields for each one of the features in the polygon layer, such as the name of the protected area is designation, it's designation type, and several other fields. We can close the attribute table by right-clicking on the X in the corner. Now we are going to explore a couple of the other options. So if I go back to the polygon layer, right-click on it, I'm also able to toggle editing so I can begin editing the features within that data layer, and we'll do this in, a, in another lesson. I can also export the data set. I can change the color very quickly by going to this, clicking on the various values. You can see as I click around the colors, I'm changing the color of the polygon data. This is one way to quickly change the symbology for the data layer, but we can also open up the properties. And when we do this, we see a lot more information is available to us. The first tab gives us some summary information for the data set, such as its name, where it's located on our computer, what type of vector data that it is, the shapefile, it's a, a polygon, it's in the WGS84 coordinate system, has certain bounding box, and the units of measurement are degrees, as well as the total number of polygons stored in the layer, which is 13, which we also saw in the attribute table. We can also go to the source tab and see, again, information regarding the geometry and coordinate system. If we select the symbology tab, here we can change the visualization of the data. So again, I can change the color. In this case, I'm going to make it red. And I can change the opacity, which is essentially to what degree is it transparent. So I'm going to make it 80% visible. And then I'm going to select OK. And now I change the way that the polygons are displayed within the map canvas. I can change the symbology for the point vector data in a similar fashion by going to the properties. In this case, I have a couple more options. I can still change the color but I can also change the size of the points. So in this case, I'm going to change it to three. And I can also change the way the points are displayed. So in this case, I'm actually going to select a blue diamond. And then hit OK. And now the point vector data is displayed as a blue diamond in the map canvas. I can also change the visualization for vector data based on fields in the attribute table. So for instance, maybe I want to go to the polygon layer and essentially change the way that the polygons are drawn based on their designation. I can do this by going up to the top in the Symbology tab, selecting Categorized, and what this does 
is it gives me options to choose which field to categorize the way the data is displayed. The first option we have is to select the field or the column that is located in the attribute data to actually categorize the data from, and this will be the de designation field. Once selected, I can actually go in and change the symbology a little bit where I can set, again, the transparency and some base colors or maybe some base designs. But for right now, we're gonna keep it simple and I'm just gonna go and select the classify button. And this is going to populate the legend with all the various designations located in the attribute table. For example, you can see forest conservation area, marine protected area, marine preserve, recreation reserve, and reserve. I now can go and click on each one of these and change the color for each one of the designations. So maybe for marine protected area, I'm gonna select something along the lines of a purple color. And then I hit OK. And when I hit OK, what this will do is change the way the data is displayed again in the map canvas. So now that we're able to change the symbology for the data layers, let's add a little bit more information to the map canvas by including labels for each one of these vector data sets. In this case, I want to include the actual name of the protected area in the map canvas. So once again, I'm going to go to the properties. But this time, I'm going to go to the labels tab. When I click on the labels tab, the first option that I have is either to not have any labels, to include simple labels, or do more complex labeling such as rule-based, which we're not going to get into in this tutorial. I'm going to select single labels. And the first option that is presented to us is to choose which field that we're going to use to label the data set. In this case, I'm going to use name, which is the field that contains the name of the protected area. I'm going to go and change the text size to 12 points, change the opacity to 80%, and then select apply. And now you can see that the polygons are labeled by the name for the protected area within the map canvas. These don't look very visually appealing, so we're going to go back and change a couple more options. First, we're going to open up the properties, go back to the label tab, and what I want to do is really make these labels stand out. So I'm going to apply a buffer behind it. We go to the buffer tab. First option is to draw the text buffer. I'm going to choose a color of white. So basically, there's going to be a white glow around the black lettering of the label. Change the opacity to 80% to match the opacity that we designated in the text tab. And another option I'm going to do is change this wrap on character. And what this does is it looks for a very specific character. And when it locates it within the label name, it actually drops the label down to a new line. So what I want to do is just put a space from the space bar into this wrap on character. So anytime there's a space, it's going to make the label stacked or it's going to drop the next word down into a new layer. The final option I'm going to select is to change the alignment. And I'm going to change this to center. And when I hit OK, what you'll see is that the labels will now be stacked, they'll be center aligned, and look much cleaner than the original labeling that we had designated. And select OK. And we can see that now the polygon labels are much cleaner looking. I'm going to do the same for the point vector data for the protected areas. So again, going in the properties, changing the label setting to single labels, labeling the point vector data with the name of the protected area, changing the text size to 12, and the opacity to 80%. I'm going to change the formatting where it wraps on the space character, and I'm going to set the alignment to center, 
and then change the buffer to white so it'll, it will have a white glow with a 80% opacity and then I'm going to select apply and then OK and then for this particular island in Vanuatu, Mafate, we now see that all the protected areas are labeled in a similar manner. Now that the data is displayed in the map canvas, we're actually going to save the project so we can work with it later. I'm going to go up to the project tab and go to save. And then I'm going to give a name for our project. So I'm going to use 2020 Vanuatu WDPA and select save. And now our project is saved and we can open it up for future analyses. And to summarize what we achieved in this lesson, was becoming more familiar with the QGIS interface. We were able to load in data sets, both raster and vector, using four different types of methodologies. We're able to symbolize data sets in very simple color patterns, as well as stylizing the data sets using categories. We were able to explore the attribute table for vector data sets and some of the other properties. And lastly, we are able to label the data based on values in the attribute table and save the project for future use. In the next video, we'll look at how to use this data to build a map template that can be used to export maps in PDF and image formats that can be used for reporting.